Well, hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to my workbench. I seem to have the go slows here a bit. Today, I have four days in which to achieve something, and it's crept up on me. And bear with me, I might get one video out, but there's other stuff I want to do as well. So, at this point, all I've done today really is marked out a couple of bits of tin. The way these are drawn are all on one piece and then they're parted off in the middle and the way that Kenneth Wells has done it or has set it out for schools is to put these in here with a, a sheet metal punch, a screw punch to put the, the 42, 44mm holes in here. Now that sort of works but I haven't got a screw punch so what I'm going to do is probably fold the sides nicely, cut them in half, drill all the holes and then set these up in the forge or chuck and drill them and, and bore them out to, to fit the tube. So that's the next job and these need three millimeter holes here for the the bars to hold it all together are just three millimeter steel. Just it's three millimeter steel with threads and nuts on each end, and they've got a bend line on each side and on the top just to hold everything in place. And this one's got a cut out for the bend for the burner, which is sixteen millimeters by thirty eight millimeters. And after all that, they bend over on top. So that's pretty straightforward. Is we've got our new bender so we can bend these up pretty quick I reckon and with a bit of care let's see how we go so I thought I'd drill these out and I bent this off camera but it's actually pretty nice and neat it's not too bad at all for a toy folder it's probably better than any folder that I've ever seen that was homemade so that's not bad it's nice and parallel and straight the next thing will be to cut this in half and set these up and and um, bore them out to fit the tube so I'll grab a hacksaw mark this in the middle and slice him across and then we'll set him up so I've spent a bit of spend a bit of time and set that up nice and no it's within about two or three thou anyway that'll be close enough just with the center the old trick there The old trick there is to centre an arbor with two, with a centre hole and the centre between centres and the clock on it. And reverse one jaw so that it'll accommodate that there. And that's pretty well on centre, so that's the way you do that. So what I'm going to do is just open that out far enough to put a boring bar through it. So that's the last pass there. 
board out to fit the tube, we wind this back. Get that tool post off, we can lift this out. And that's not a bad fit in there, so that's where that wants to be. Got a nasty burr on the back. A deburr and tool would be nice. We're probably just going to take it out and give it a rub with the file. That's that one balled out. Nice and central and ready to accept it. Ready to accept the boiler. That's the burner in. Now the ones here are ready to set up too. Actually, completely unaware why I've just undone those two jaws. They're stuffed up there. I'm going to have to sit down and set it up properly. That's no great hardship. So I've eventually got that set up pretty close. It's certainly, certainly close enough for a bit of sheet metal work. We'll drill him out again. So that's an 18 millimeter drill, and that's about the biggest one I've got. So that's going to have to do. As soon as I get my forge going, the first job will be to make up some decent little silver soldered high speed tungsten carbide boron bars. A bit of a set of them from about 6 millimeters up to about 20 millimeters. And that's a bit of a priority now we've got this tool post. The trouble is with this boring bar is if you stick the tool out far enough so that it cuts into the corner, you find that it's cut in about a 25mm hole. Which is alright on big diameters, but on small stuff like most of what I do, it's a bit of a nuisance. So I've got some some decent tool steel there, and what I had sort of thought to do was to mill a flat or, or to, to file a flat on one end. And fit up some carbide chips and then silver solder them. And that's pretty sweet. Can undo that. It's nasty burr on here. Give that a bit of a clean up. So we've got the two holes bored. They go one each end of this piece of tube. And it's starting to look like a little boiler. So next job is to cut these down. Just might check those lines that I've marked there and cut along them and cut into there and then fold the flaps down 
and we've still got to cut this out. So I've cut and filed them out to the lines and then I've just taken a drawer out of the pan press and folded them at 90 degrees. Slip them out and this is what we've got. One still needs a little bit of work. So it's a bit of a look at how they they turn out. There's still a cut out in this one. In this end for the burner. And that's the next job. So we've spent probably, I guess, an hour and a half, two hours doing these. It's another nice little project for the night. They still need a little bit of a clean up there. That's still hanging over a little bit there. See there, it's a little bit a little bit high there. But we've drilled two holes there and just filed that up. All I did was hold a bit of high speed steel in the device and file up against it. So that's nice and quick and easy. And we need to really just give that a, a little bit of a file there. And a little bit of finishing work on that one there is just hanging over a little bit. And clean the blue off them and give them a coat of paint. So that's the final bits guys. Uh, I've just put a piece of high speed steel in the in the vise up against that line and filed up to it and give it all nice square and true that's a cut out for the burner goes in there these have all had a bit of a file up they all seem to fit together nicely and they're all pretty true on each end so all that needs is a clean up and a, a bit of metho to take the blue off and probably they're ready for a coat of paint. So that's another part finished. So thanks for tuning in guys and more soon.